Well, welcome back. Thank you. I hope that you have your Bibles in hand. I have mine. We're going to go to a part five of our series here at Hope Chapel. That series is entitled Courage to Face Our Fears. Courage to Face Our Fears is the series. But today, the title is Courage to Grow Up Intentionally. Courage to Grow Up Intentionally. So as we begin, naturally, we're not going to receive anything unless we ask the Lord, right? And the Lord is very generous. I <laughs> heard about this person that wanted to know, and Lord, how much is really a million years like to you, God? And he answered back, it's like a second. So he said, well, Lord, how much to you is a million dollars? And he says, it's kind of like a penny to me. Then the man felt very confident to say, well, Lord, may I have a penny? And God said, in a second. So we want to take a look right now and just thank him for what he's going to show us. And may this brief message bring some encouragement to you. Father, thank you for this because we know that as we gather together, we're encouraged by the word to say encourage one another. So Lord, that courage comes by just being together in Christ. So Lord, we gather around your word and may this message bring something of direction, purpose, and stability in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're taking a look at growing up intentionally and having that courage. I don't know what it was like for you when you were about ready to launch from high school. Remember those old days? It's going to really be up to me. I don't know if I really have what it takes to grow up. I remember when my daughter Holly, when she's just a little person, asked me the question, Dad, Dad, why do grown-ups stop growing? Well, that's a whole nother view, isn't it? But it's interesting. Do people stop growing? Everything that we want to learn it requires some intentionality to invest our time and our efforts in. Nothing just happens on its own. No matter what it is, it, we don't grow, especially spiritually, just by accident. Hey, if I wanted to be an a cook, a chef, and give out some irresistible barbecue, some great tasting smoked food. I really have to go at it with intentionality to understand some things. So I need to study, I need to research, learn, practice, experiment, and experience some great barbecue. So that's important for us to understand that it's the same with spiritual growth, only happens with intentionality. So I want to encourage you, even at Hope Chapel, this coming week, we're going to be centering in on Wednesday night church. We're going to have full-blown live worship, but we're going to be looking at flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. And that's an area we're wanting people to experience and learn and do. The intentionality of growing up in spiritual things. And then we're going to bring it in to our setting here in the sanctuary in between our 9 and 11 o'clock service. Hope that you can come. It's going to call it the afterflow service. But let's take a look. How does a person spiritually grow up intentionally? Let's take a look. But we're looking at number one, know what the goal is. That's important in anything. What is the goal we're taking a look at? Because the goal for us as believers is we want to be like Jesus. That is it. How many know that you've heard from me, the answer is always Jesus, no matter what it is. The goal is always Jesus. The answer is always Jesus. Even when I was a junior high teacher way back, I remember these rowdy junior hires, but I sure did like them. They were a lot of fun to teach. And I said, listen, if you get nothing out of this class today or the next week or the next week, the answer is always Jesus. So then I started teaching some lessons, and they'd always say, well, the answer is Jesus, Paul, isn't it? When I decided to trick them, and I said, well, listen, what is, anybody have the answer? Something that's bushy, gray, with a big bushy tail. And a young girl raised her hand and says, well, Paul, I know the answer is Jesus, but it sure sounds like a squirrel to me. <laughs> Well, anyway, the answer is always Jesus and the goal. What is the goal? Let's look here for a moment because letter A, we are to measure our lives against Jesus. In other words, how do we compare to him? Check it out with me. I'm in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. 
New Living Translation, says this will continue until we come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Now, if we're not going to say, okay, we're going to measure up Jesus is the goal we're going for, we're going to find other measuring sticks. And that's where people get confused. They go after other things to say, well, this is my measure to being mature. Watch out because it's very easy to go in that direction. How many times do people think, well, my church attendance shows I'm mature. The classes I've attended shows I'm mature. The amount of missions trips I've attended, oh, I'm mature. Those are times that people might say, well, I've been a believer for many, many years, so I must be very mature. Well, and then there could be other measuring sticks about even behavior. Well, I haven't sinned since <laughs> 19. 88, can you imagine that? That would be a problem. Say, well, I must be mature. Somehow a legalistic rule there. There could be also those who measure themselves with others. We go after the wrong measurement. I'm saying we want to go and compare ourselves to Jesus. He's our goal. Because how many remember those measuring elements among ourselves? That's not a good measuring stick. We deal with a society... As broken people, we don't want to use others as our measuring stick. Completely, completely, it's Jesus. Now, I know, and I'm sure you're thinking, that's an impossible measuring up to, to go as Jesus being our goal. Well, the purpose for that is, is that he's just so perfect, so that keeps us humble, keeps us dependent upon God. It's like, Lord... I'm not anywhere close to you, but if you'll help me. See how that is? It's so important because we know that God has a finishing work that he's going to bring, and it's going to probably be while we finally arrive in heaven. But may it keep us humble. May it keep us pursuing the Lord and dependent upon Jesus. Letter B, we are to grow in every way like Jesus. So we're going to measure Jesus is the goal. But we want to grow in every way just like Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4 again. But let's look at verse 15. It says, Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. So it's important we take a look. Jesus wants to touch every aspect of, and transform every aspect of our lives. It is him that we want to look at and be important for us to say, Lord, help us. You enable us to measure and to grow in those areas. One of the things that I think causes Christians to say is that they become just fatigued and disappointed and feel like a failure is because they always refer to things in the past. What do I mean by that? It's always something that they did in the past. There's never something of a progression that's happening. They're always dealing with things in an absolute way that happened in the past. Things like, oh, I totally gave my life to Christ way back. I'm completely yielded to God back then. I surrendered fully to God over there. But it's not something that's ongoing. That's where people become disappointed My experience with surrender is something that's always evolving. It's amazing. What happens to me now in this stage in my life at 63 years of age is equally as sincere and important as when I was 22. Though the levels are different, it's equally as important. I remember at age 22, it was more like God speaking to me like Paul you need to pick up that person. All of a sudden, now it's Paul, you need to give that automobile of yours to that young lady. There's a difference there, and there's a measurement of understanding, but we must know what the goal is if we are ever going to grow up with intentionality. That's important, important for us to recognize. Number two, let's move on. To learn to cooperate with God's working. Now, 
When we start dealing with courage to grow up with intentionality, I'm telling you, that's important. Nobody wants to just consider like I've arrived, but the area of cooperation. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2. Would you look at Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13 with me? It says, work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear, for God is working in you. Give in you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Now, that's important for us because if you look at letter A, it says you cannot make yourself grow spiritually. Check that out for a moment. Check that line that I just said. You cannot grow yourself. You can't make yourself grow spiritually. That's important. But God starts to grow. We want to cooperate with it. I remember that time when uh, as a young boy, I wanted to grow to be like that person, tall, able, willing, invited to participate in the activities. I wanted to grow up, but I couldn't do anything about it. It's the same spiritually. There are things that will help us grow, and there are things that will hinder our growth, both physically and spiritually. So we want to be able to cooperate with God's working in our lives. Look at Galatians chapter 3, verse 3. It says, how foolish can you be? After starting your new lives in the Spirit, why are you now trying to become perfect by your own human effort? So when we deal with this, it's important to know what is our part of growing spiritually, growing up, and what is God's part significant for us? Let's look at letter B. Learning to cooperate is essential for future growth. Why is that? Well, it's critical spiritually. It's critical. The skills that happen there to cooperate. I like the fact how significant it is in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 21. Check it out with me. It says, may he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of of Jesus Christ, every good thing that is pleasing to him. And I think it's important for us that we need to take a look because cooperating, what do we mean by that? My, the courage to grow up intentionally is vital because it's God, the Holy Spirit, that sets the curriculum. And it's God, the Holy Spirit, that sets how long that course will last. That's important. Lord, I cooperate with you. How many remember James chapter 1 says, Count it all joy, brethren, when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your face produces something. And verse 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. So that's important. Lord, what's going on in this trial of my life? What is attempting here to take me over, or what are you trying to show me? Ask God. That's important. But when we take a look at cooperating, because our goal is the courage to grow up with intentionality. I want to grow up, and I am letting the Lord do that. So we've got to assume this responsibility because we want to learn to listen. We want to learn to understand what God might be doing. Here are some examples. Maybe these are the curriculums, the courses that God's leading you or me in in times past or maybe even currently, the experience uh, relational issues. What would be the curriculum? Well, looks like you or I would need to learn what it is to love or to forgive or reconciliation or better communication. What if the experience all of a sudden ends up with stress issues? Well, the curriculum all of a sudden would be how to discover and live in an element of peace regardless of the exterior. What if it's experiencing a lack of finances? Well, the curriculum might just be the Spirit of God saying, listen, I'm going to grow you up here, and it is dealing with how to trust God and obey in areas in dependence upon Him. What if those experiences, once again, remember, cooperating is essential. What if it's a lack of joy or satisfaction in your life? Well, the spiritual curriculum might be learning the secret of contentment, not praying to try to get somewhere, but praying, Lord, help me just to work through 
what is happening. So whatever pain or frustration or problems or irritation, is this a curriculum? The Spirit of God says, I am going to grow you up with intentionality. Oh, <laughs> Lord, I want to cooperate. I remember as a Royal Ranger commander, I first started off ministering, ministering to young boys. I had the category of 9 to 12-year-olds. And one day, we were really in some cliffs, and we were teaching the young teens how to repel down the cliffs. And my group was off by the picnic tables while the older boys were learning to repel down the cliff, down to the canyon below. But my group, we were about 60 yards away. We were off the picnic table. We were laughing, busting up jokes. It was a lot of fun. And then all of a sudden, the instructor was done with that set of boys, and he yelled, hey, Paul, bring your guys on over to the edge of the cliff. Whoa, you know what? When that happened, man, all the fun and games, we were sobered up. You started looking over the cliff. You felt the heat. The thermals rising from the canyon floor, I'm telling you, all eyes and ears were wide open. What do we need to learn to repel down? And what I was just wanting to say, it's interesting because when God starts to work in our lives, whatever that spiritual curriculum is, sometimes it can be a little bit tedious, tense, maybe tender to us. Lord, why am I going through this? And I'm telling you, some people's prayers are, Lord, keep me away from anything like that. In other words, I want to go back to the picnic tables, get me away from the edge of the cliff. I want to, their whole prayer life, their whole purpose in life is to live as far away from any form of challenge or journey in Jesus. We just want to back off from anything. Don't do that. Don't do that. I encourage people here at Hope Chapel, come on, be a part of our afterflow on Wednesday. It's starting this Wednesday. You'll love it, 7 to 8.30. We're going to learn together some things about moving in the Spirit and in the gifts of the Spirit. Let's journey together. Let's enjoy together. Well, let's take a look at another one. Number three, develop habits that help you grow. Develop habits. I like 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. It literally just says this, train yourself to be godly. <laughs> That word train literally means describing habits. When you work on habits or you repeat habits, it becomes really a pattern or an action. Now, that's important for us because nothing just grows on its own. That's what we're saying again. We're talking, I want to grow. I don't want to be the same Paul Harmon today, five years from now. Lord, do something in my life. I want to correct, I want to walk, I want to journey, I want to be with you. I want to ask God, what is it that's hindering my growing up and what is helping my growing up? Here are four habits that every follower should have. Nothing new to you and me, but it's worth putting out there. Number one, just take a look at the bullet points the habit of God's Word daily. Do you have a reading plan in the Bible? That's important for us. Any type of reading plan will do, but get into the book. Don't always read even Christian literature. Get into the book. Make sure it's daily. Another bullet point, the habit of communing with God daily called prayer. Do you talk constantly with God? Are you asking him and processing your emotions or your thoughts or your struggles with him? Another bullet point would be the habit of serving. Serving and spiritual growth go hand in hand. It's so significant. If God says, I want you to learn to forgive your brother, and yet we avoid that brother, we'll never learn what it is to issue forgiveness. It's important for us to have the habit of, of serving we can take in but if we're never taking and giving out boy that's not a healthy christian lifestyle the fourth and final bullet point the habit of community the growing the best way together is with others in our life not in isolation we've hit those things we've understood that just want to highlight that because the point three is develop habits that help you grow number four see failure as the learning process. 
Well, that's important for us. See, Phil, I, I find that as I age and I deal with older adults, we start to see failure as a negative. Oh, I wish I didn't do that early on. I wish I could go back and say, oh, don't do that. See it as a positive, as a learning element, part of the overall growth process. Remember, courage to growing up with intentionality. Let's look at Luke chapter 22. I always like Simon Peter because there's just so noteworthy failures. But look what Jesus, he's so encouraging to him. He just said, Simon, Simon, I'm in Luke 22, 31, 32. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat, but I have prayed and pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. Gives Peter an assignment. When you come back, we know you're going to blow it. Boy, I sure like that. Remember when Jesus saw Peter on the Sea of Galilee after he resurrected from the dead? Man, Peter's right there, and Jesus asked him, Peter, do you love me? Remember that? Here, Peter denied Christ three times, and he just asked him, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, I do. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Yes, Lord. He asked him three times, Peter, do you love me? Then Peter's upset. Why, Lord? You know all things. Then he says, feed my lammies. That's important. I love that about Jesus. It's important that you and I understand that. I think anybody else who uh, may have been uh, maybe disappointed by their following or their friends, Jesus didn't come back to these disciples and said, hey, Peter, I just resurrected to tell you, thanks a lot, man. You and these macho disciples, you forsook me on the cross. I'm just telling you how disappointed I am. Nope. Jesus just said, Peter, do you love me? Didn't even bring that up. He just knew this about you and about me and about Peter, that if we love the Lord, though we're riddled with failure, if we have tons of mistakes, if we just love Jesus, we'll be all right. That's what Jesus was telling Peter. Do you love me? I do, Lord. You know me. You know all things. Then you're going to be all right. Do you love Jesus? That's important for us because what failure does not mean, please remember, failure does not mean that God no longer loves us. That is not what failure means. Failure does not mean that we're somehow losers either, that we're somehow now identified by past misdeeds. And failure doesn't mean either that we will become unforgivable, that somehow God's tired of that. We've done that three times in one day. And you think he's going to forget? Yes, he'll forget. He's faithful and just to forgive us. Failure does not mean that we're spiritually stuck somehow and that now we'll never improve, we'll never progress. Watch out for those things. We're talking about growing up, courage to grow up with intentionality. So watch out for that. Never, boy, if I want to be the best cook on a grill, man, I, I've burnt many things on my barbecue. Didn't keep me from going back at it. Go back. Keep at it. Don't let failure stop. What failure should do, what failure does mean, is that it increases our dependency upon Jesus. Oh, man, I can't do this journey by myself. That's what failure means. Failure means that you maintain a healthy humility. I'm telling you, Scripture's pretty clear. Before a collapse, before a fall, pride comes. So, Lord, I need you. Failure does mean that we have to really still work to do. That's it. Lord, I still have work to do in my life, and I want to keep on learning. So the greatest life lessons for you or me, has it not been when there's been a really a terrible season of some painful, painful situations? Don't despair. That's important. Be courageous. Let's grow up with intentionality. Remember, nothing grows by itself if we're wanting to really apply something in our lives. It's important for us. So I do feel sometimes, and maybe I'm talking to you, and you feel discouraged and you feel like quitting, quitting things. And like, what is the effort? It feels like a bunch of do's and don'ts. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Hang in there. Watch out. 
A very painful situation I'm sure you're dealing with right now, but hang in there and trust the Lord for that. And number five, the value. Value feedback from others as a true gift. Value feedback. Now, that's important for us because feedback, get this, is the breakfast of champions. If you want feedback, you need feedback in order for your life to be a success, in order for your business to be a success. You and I need people to give us feedback because we don't know what we don't know. We really need people to help us with that. I want to grow up. I'm courageous, and I'm willing to ask people for feedback. Give me feedback. So we, we don't think that when we're willing, as a pastor, I want to give people feedback. Oftentimes, I, I think, yeah, they'll hate hearing it, so I just won't give it. And for us that are looking for feedback, oftentimes, oh, man, that, that's harsh. Oh, I hate getting feedback. Oh, that's so painful. So oftentimes, I want you to know, let's view feedback as a gift. In our setting of the after flow, we're dealing with how to move in the gifts of the Spirit. If you speak in a particular spiritual language, and you don't use it often, get with somebody that flows in that. If you feel you've got the, the gift of working miracles, get with somebody that knows how to just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. That's what it's all about. Get feedback and grow up with intentionality. All your life, you and I get feedback, do we not? Don't you get feedback? I mean, come on. You went through school, you take tests, that's feedback. You go ahead and you're dealing with a date, somebody you take out on a date, and you could see right now she's not willing or he's not willing to really follow through with that. That's feedback. <laughs> How about just somebody honking at you while you're driving? Listen, that's, that's feedback. We just have areas where we just don't like certain feedback. You have a job, get a job review. Listen, that's feedback. We need feedback. Let's view it as a gift. So your willingness to accept feedback is really going to help you and me to grow up. Have courage to grow up with intentionality. Don't dread feedback. Crave it. I need feedback, but I do have to be careful who gives me feedback. Why? Because who is that source that's just randomly speaking to me? And that's important. Let's crave feedback. Can anybody help me to be a better person in this way or approach uh, the uh, maybe audience in some form or my relatives in a better fashion? Is there anyone that can help me be a better parent? Some way, somehow. And the best way to handle getting feedback is to make sure you separate the do from the who. Now, that's important. The do means make sure they give you feedback on your performance. The who is you don't want because that's where you start to criticize who, who, who we are. So get the person that's going to give you the feedback on performance, not on character evaluation or criticism that way. That's where it becomes painful. So make sure it's about performance. And bring clarifying questions when you want feedback. You saw what I did. What did you think it was like from your perspective when I spoke that? to that person. How do you think I came across when I was addressing that? Do you think I looked timid when I was looking up? I kept my eyes closed too long. That kind of specific question. You say, what do you think? What do you think? What are you asking for? So that's important. Be specific. So we must reject the myth that somehow we can grow up and develop all by ourselves. That is a myth. There's no way. That does not happen. We need each other. It's important. We need the input of each other. That's the beauty Hope Chapel is leaning into Wednesday church service, the afterflow, for the sake of bringing that spiritual dimension in between our services. I'm so excited. I hope you'll be a part of that. Hope you'll bring your friends that need to have prayer and see what God and how God will heal them, provide for them. Oh, I'm so excited. I believe God's going to use you simply by how we invite people that need Christ and a touch that will change their life forever. How do we go ahead 
and get that feedback. Let's take a look. Three things while we wrap it up today. Letter A, advice. I like the, uh, the central theme of Proverbs is all about making sure that we acquire wisdom by listening to others or receiving insight from others. That's the book of Proverbs. But let's look here for a moment on advice because when you look here in Proverbs 15, 22, it says, plans go wrong for the lack of advice. Many advisors bring success. <laughs> Look at Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20. It says this, Get all the advice and instruction you can, so you'll be wise the rest of your life. Isn't that nice? So getting advice is the further along in our journey we go in our lives, we want to have people around that have been there before. Would you seek out those people? that have been there, that have experienced that. We need those people in our lives. I won't be offended. That's how I won't be offended. I need you to speak. What should I expect when I go into that area, when I deal with that job situation, when I'm trying to pray for the unknown and help my friends or family find help in God? Boy, that's, that's good advice to give seek out from those that have seen results or maybe even setbacks, possibly even failures. All of that's a great learning curve and great feedback. Letter B, correction. In Proverbs chapter 10, let's look at, it says here in verse 17, correction. It says people who accept discipline are on the pathway to life, but those who ignore correction will go astray. <laughs> I think that's amazing because we all have blind spots. No one can completely self-correct on their own. It never happens. We need somebody to say, let me help you get a, a course correction going. Check it out with me in Proverbs 15, verse 32. If you reject discipline, you will only harm yourself. But if you listen to correction, you grow in understanding. Wow. Feedback. We need that, do we not? And finally, encouragement. In Ecclesi and really, in First Thessalonians, the encouragement's another way of receiving feedback. Would you look at First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11? It says, so encourage each other and build each other up just as you are already doing. I like that. I know the gifts of the Spirit are all about edifying the church when they're operating in a corporate setting, but it says, so encourage each other. Do you know when we encourage one another. Scripture is very clear. We bring courage to one another. And that's our message today. Courage to keep growing with intentionality. Courage to keep growing up intentionally. That's important for us. Now, you and I know that life and spiritual growth is not easy. You and I need people in our lives It'll help us stay the course, stay the course. Boy, it seems like a lot of pastoral duties is helping people. Don't give up. Let people come around you that will speak encouragement and life to you. It's vital for us. You sometimes can't see yourself arriving at that destination of great accomplishment, but people around you do. People will speak that over you. Let them come around you. You know, one person says, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Pastor Paul's telling us. This seems like too much, too much. And somebody else says, I can do this. I can't wait to do this. I will start right now. Which one's right? Both. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So if somebody says, I can't grow up intentionally, and other says, man, I desire to improve and to grow up. I will intentionally get busy. Both are right. May the Lord help you and me. God has some great things for you, and I'm excited. Matter of fact, it always starts with Jesus. Remember, <laughs> he's the answer. I want to invite you right now, if you've never surrendered your life to Jesus, if you never fully committed everything to him, that is the only way, not just partial, not just some things where it's convenient, 
fully, completely trust him with your whole life. Would you pray this simple prayer with me right now? I encourage you even just close your eyes and hear my voice. Repeat this prayer. Dear Jesus, I believe in you, that you are the Savior of the world. And right now, dear Lord, I ask you, save me from all my past. I trust you for the future you have for me. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life to stay. I trust you, dear Lord, to make me the kind of person you want me to be. Now, Jesus, I believe heaven is mine and that, Lord, grow me up quickly so that I can help others grow in you as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, I believe some powerful things are going to be happening to you. I can't wait to hear about it. I hope that you'll be able to come by Hope Chapel one day soon. Things are opening up in the state of California. Maybe you don't live anywhere near California. Would you send me an email? You'll see my email address on our website. Go to hopechapelhb.org. Check it out. Would you continue to just be praying for us? Some wonderful and enriching things are happening in our church community, and it's affecting Huntington Beach in powerful ways. Can you be a part of that? We're going to be concluding right now, but linger just a little bit, and I'll be back to show you how you can partner with us financially as well. And I want to thank you so much for joining us today. God bless you. May God bless you and keep you. May God cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May God's countenance come upon you and give you peace. God bless you. Thanks for joining us today. I'll see you soon. I want to thank you for joining us today at Hope Chapel Huntington Beach. It's our desire to bring the teachings of this church to others globally. If today's message has brought you closer to Jesus, we want to know. Can you send us an email to office at hopechapelhb.org? Would you consider supporting this ministry financially? You can give securely online at hopechapelhb.org slash give. If a check is your preferred method, you can send a mailed check to Hope Chapel, P.O. Box 548, Huntington Beach, California, 92648. If you want to be contacted by Hope Chapel, would you consider subscribing to our weekly newsletters at Hope hb.org slash subscribe. Whatever season of life you're in, we want to go through it with you. We want to thank you once again for joining us, and God bless you.